Welcome back. We are coming to you from Washington this morning. We have breaking news. President Trump just tweeted this, uh, quote, Austin bombing suspect is dead. Great job by law enforcement and all concerned. Welcome back. We are coming to you this morning from Washington. It is Wednesday, March 21st. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. The Austin bombing suspect is dead after a confrontation with police. Authorities say that the suspect killed himself after detonating an explosive device inside his car as police were approaching the car. Officials are now identifying the suspect as a 24-year-old male. They say they have not yet found a motive. That's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he did. The investigation is still underway. Police have not yet found the motive, as you just heard, and they are unsure if he acted alone. The bombing spree began on March 2nd. It continued through yesterday. A total of six explosive devices killed two people, injured several others. Police say that a package that exploded at a FedEx facility near San Antonio led to a major break in the case. Joining us now to talk more about that and other things is Congressman Chris Collins. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Maria. Your reaction to what we're learning this morning about this 24-year-old white male. Well, it's a dangerous world. Uh, we have to be vigilant, whether we're at the movies, whether we're going to our kids' soccer games, whether we're at a, an, another venue. We have deranged individuals wandering the streets. Uh, who knows why this person did it? And we may, well, we may never know. But it's just uh, a dangerous world. Yeah, I mean, we'll keep following it. And, of course, the police chief, Brian Manley, earlier said that they are not sure if this person acted alone. So the investigation is, uh, is, is still very much in, in force. Let me turn gears to what you're working on this week, and that is the spending bill. What can you tell us in terms of where you are? Will we see a government shutdown? Well, well, we will not see a shutdown. The one good thing, Maria, is we agreed here a while ago when we did the last CR, continuing resolution, on the top line numbers, including the $700 billion for defense and an offsetting increase in other discretionary spending. So with agreeing, agreement on that, we're into the weeds, on the details, all kinds of little nuances, differences between a Democrat version, a Republican version. Worst case, another continuing resolution for through the weekend or something along those lines. We may come to an agreement today and post an omnibus, which covers everything sometime today. We could then vote on that Friday, <clears throat> get it over to the Senate. If we see another continuing <clears throat> resolution, Heather, John, do markets get upset at that? The What's markets the have actually liked uh, government shutdowns. I, I know you wouldn't expect that, but they have favored it in the past after it, it, historically the average government shutdown down, the markets are up 1.8%. Wow. Well, we're not going to see uh, that anyway. But, but I hope you not. Say, that's off the table at this point. Yeah, shutdown's off the table. On a day that the Federal Reserve is probably going to raise interest rates, John. Right. I think that's the bigger story for the for the market right now. These continuing resolutions, these short-term patches have become standard operating procedure in Washington, and I think the market is used to it. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, 